Hideki learning with the computer audio. Let's see here. Um, okay, start video. Video is started. I look like a monster. Good, I should be a monster. Let's see here. Uh, share screen. Share screen tool. Okay, share it. Yay. Okay. So, um, uh, I've been mucking around in chapter two here. Chapter two is like mostly stuff I've never seen before. Not mostly, but it's a good amount of stuff that I've never seen before. And um, uh, but it's all about like getting four digits of precision. And I'm not used to that stuff. Man. That is wild. That is wild stuff. Oh, geez, here's three more pages. Where are they, where are they going? Okay. So, any case, um, what do I want to talk about? I want to talk about the uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about why is everything so weird? Like taking up my whole screen here. Ah, well, that takes up less. Uh, about this guy here. Ah, so let's start with um stoichiometry calculations for gravimetric analysis, right? So um, uh, I don't know if, um, have you guys finished this one in lab yet or where am I relative to lab? I should probably know that, but sorry, I don't know. The Monday group, we haven't started the gravimetric yet. We just had our first lab in our, which is the analytical um, you know, balance, like the balance and then pipe it and view it. We haven't even finished the view it. <laughs> yeah, Excellent. when we still pipe it. Oh yeah, my right. God, this is going so slowly. <laughs> yeah, Monday lab's going, is rough. We, we really got the short end of the stick. <laughs> now we're oh, gonna geez. be one week back again because I of know, the we have Labor Day. <laughs> oh Jesus, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Makes anyone feel better? Wednesday's group just finished the first one and we haven't even started this, so. Okay. It's mainly cleaning for the first, for, the, for this one. Jeez. So like, we're not even doing anything this next class either. Oh, that's yeah, so I, I'm in the section two and um, I only got to the part where you use the concentrated hydrochloric acid. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, thank God. Also, my, my son, he bought this thing called an AeroPress. It's an AeroPress coffee maker. And it makes really, really good coffee. But I think I overdosed this morning because I made this big cup of coffee. It was like so good. I didn't put milk in it or anything. I just sucked it down. And then I'm like, oh, but, oh yeah, I want another one, right? And I went and I got another one. And I think that's probably why I'm like whacked out this morning. But in any case, so we're behind, but whatever. So uh, let's do gravimetric analysis, right? So you guys know the um, know the drill here. Like so, there's gravimetric and volumetric. Um, uh, gravimetric is so precise. I mean, it, it's you know it's as good as say the solubility product of your um, of your analyte. You know, if you have a really insoluble analyte, then it's going to be a really accurate analysis. And then uh, <clears throat> volumetric is this is basically titration. And that can be really precise too. You know, you can get it down to less than a percent. You go oh, less than a percent. That's not so great, but it is. It's really good. You know, I mean, if you want to go crazy with stuff, you can do better. But you know, generally, I mean, getting things within a percent is really good. So, um, you know, like uh, for example, if you want to measure iron in a supplement, you can. Um, uh, dissolve the iron in HCl, right? And HCl is important as the chloride 
it stabilizes the iron two and probably iron three ions also in solution as ferric, uh, as hexachloral iron. And it's just like, it changes the quality of iron solutions completely. So um, definitely use HCl, right? HNO3 is not gonna be the same. So you dissolve it in HCl, right? Then you oxidize it with peroxide, right? Take your precious analyte here, the iron. Whoops, it's all, I hate this stupid shit. So take the precious iron here, react it with H2O2. That's gonna suck up some acid from solution. This comes from HCl, right? You got a big excess of HCl, right? You just got a few milligrams of iron, but you got 0.1 moles of HCl per liter. That's you know, uh, three and a half grams per liter. So um, that's gonna make iron three and water, right? So um, which of these reagents, iron two or peroxide should be the limiting reagent in this case? Who can answer that for me? Uh, would it be the iron? Yes, the iron should be limiting, right? You should have excess peroxide. That way, all of the iron will be oxidized, right? And when I say all, I'm talking about, you know, four or five or six nines, you know? But, you know, obviously there'll be a few iron two ions floating around just to be weird. But essentially, you'll get all of the iron, right? If you have iron as a limiting reagent, all of it will be reacted. And H2O2 will be the excess reagent. And only a small fraction of the H2O2 may be reacted here, right? Then you take the um, uh, this product here, and you make it basic with ammonium hydroxide. I'm not really sure why we use ammonium hydroxide, not potassium, but who's to complain, right? It could have it could have to do with the rate of reaction or something. You got the two iron threes plus three hydroxides, right? And then uh, um, some water, right? And then that'll make this goo, this iron hydroxide goo, right? Then you then you're going to have to filter this goo out and get it onto a filtering crucible and then um, bake the bejesus out of it at 900 degrees centigrade. Do you know what red hot is? Red hot is about 550 centigrade. Red hot um, at 550 or so, uh, Pyrex glass is melting, literally melting at 550. This is 300 and 50 degrees hotter. This is white hot. If you open the furnace in a 900 degree furnace, be prepared for a blast of infrared radiation that's going to like, it could hurt. <laughs> so anyway, so then you, you that's called calcining, heat the bejesus out of it in air. That'll give you a uh, solid iron, iron oxide, right? And then that iron oxide, you just weigh it, right? And you weigh it by difference. You weigh the um, crucible filter before the addition of this, and then the crucible filter after, and then you take the difference, and that's even higher, right? So in a gravimetric analysis, uh, you need to know how much product to produce um, a known amount, or how much reactant, right, actually, uh, it's actually uh, product is used twice here. Let's say, let's say, um, let's call this reactant, right? Because that's actually more uh, uh, more accurate here, right? We need to know how much reactant to produce this much product. Right? That's an important distinction there, right? So. Um, in order to do this analysis, we have to work backwards. We have to say, well, um, 
uh, we're going to start with this much. Oh, my internet connection is unstable. Jeez. Can you guys hear me? Sometimes a little bit, you know, like going out, but yeah, I guess. Oh, I no. Know. Oh, my God. I hate it. You know, I've got a freaking gigabit internet here, but it like it's intermittent. It's at and It's intermittent. You know, Comcast is more expensive. They got a wire, but it's a little bit steadier. So, uh, anyway, so, um, so in order to do this, you've got to work backwards from the price. Say, well, if we have 0.25 grams of this, how much of this do we have? And then if we got how much of this, then we can say, if that's 15 megs per tab, then we can calculate the number of tablets, right? So let's do this thing, right? So 0.25 grams of iron oxide, we're gonna calculate the moles, 1.6 times 10 minus three moles, right? Just divide by the molecular weight. Ba -ba -ba. Denominator, denominator comes up to numerator, right? And then you go take the mole ratio, and then you take the molecular mass again, this time of iron of the reactant. Start with the product, now we're doing the reactant. Say 0.18 grams of iron. Oh my gosh, we need 180 milligrams of iron. If each tablet has 15 milligrams, that is a shorthand here for 0.015, right? Milli to gram is three hops, right? If we have the decimal point here, it's one, two, three hops, right? We go from 15 to 0 0.015, right? One, two, three, 0 0.015, right? So you could say just as easily 180 over 15, uh, in, in either case, it comes out to 12 tablets. You know, this is an even answer, you know, and if you get like, oh, 11.23, just use 11, you know, or use 12, whatever. This is just a way to estimate how much you're gonna get in the end, right? So you're not like way off, like way too low or way too high, right? So use 12. Okay, so, um, let us see here. Uh, if we if we want to use, uh, I'll do this one for you. If we want to use. Um, each tablet is twenty megs. Right? Set up here. Each tablet is twenty megs. How many tablets to make a half a gram of iron oxide, right? Well, um, let us start with, oops, I gotta get my stupid webcam software, stupid um, document, my InSwan document software, because I can't hold it. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, good, there's this. And ready for prime time here. Uh, 20 megs, 2.5 megs here, right? So where I would start here is I would say, uh, let's take our starting conditions are, uh, we want, um, we have 20 milligrams of iron per tablet and we want 0 0.5 grams, a big amount, of Fe2O3, right? So let's just work backwards here, right? Let's say 0 0.50 grams of Fe2O3. So just one thing to recognize here, I know it's obvious, but if we if we have more of more iron oxide, that corresponds to more iron, right? So this is in direct proportion to our answer, which is going to be iron tablets, right? So 0.5 grams of that. 
Now we're going to convert it to moles and remove the oxygen, right? So one mole, or 159.7 grams. Then we're going to go for 2Fe, uh, 1Fe2O3, right? So now we're, we're changing from Fe2O3, Fe, right? And then we're just going to multiply by 55.8 grams per mole of Fe, right? And this equals... Uh, 0 0.394 grams of Fe, right? So how many milligrams? 0 0.394, we got one, two, three. That equals 394 milligrams, right? 394.0 milligrams, right? And the point zero is just implied there, right? So 394 milligrams times one tablet for every 20 milligrams, 20 milligrams is equal to 17.4 tablets. Now, you could do 17 or 18 tabs. Either is okay. Oops. Right. Okay. Does that make sense, everybody? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, any questions on this? Like, um, like, what about that first step? What about that second step? Anything like that? No. Uh, okay. No, I think I understand. Okay, cool. Excellent. So let's move on here. Let's see. So, um, so now, so now we know how many tablets to use. Say so how much three percent H two O two should we use to provide a 50% access of H2O2, right? And this is actually, um, you know, you could just say, oh, we'll just use the whole bottle, you know, or whatever, right? But there's a couple of problems with that approach because, um, uh, you know, 3% peroxide is really not that big a deal, but it's, you know, it's not free and it's a little bit, um, corrosive, you know, it's, it's a peroxide, which means it has, you know, it has a, a, an oxygen um, in sort of the one plus, or I'm sorry, the one minus oxidation state. So it's really wanting to go to zero or minus two, you know? And so it can be an oxidant or a reductant, depending on the um, reaction that you're uh, talking about, right? In this case, for iron two, it will oxidize it and it'll make water, you know? And so um, I think it's worth considering here that um, uh, we don't want to make a ton of excess uh, peroxide, right? So let's just figure out how to do this here. So, um, so if we want, um, actually there's, there's a test yourself head right of this and it says if you want a 25% excess H2O2 
um, then uh, 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 and and you're going to use twelve tablets of iron with uh, 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 fifteen milligrams tab of iron, right? You want twenty five percent of excess on. Um, peroxide, and you've got 12 tablets with 15 milligrams per tablet. So how much, um, how much to get this 25% excess? Well, uh, let's start with the iron, right? The iron that we know. Let's say, well, we've got, we've got 12 tabs. And we say, well, it's how much iron is that? It's going to be 15 milligrams per tablet, right? 12 times 15, that's going to give us the, the number of milligrams of iron, right? And then we're going to say, well, how about um, one gram per every thousand milligrams? Well, that's to grams of iron, right? And say that there's one uh, I'm sorry, and then that we're, we're going to say that there's one mole iron two here for every 55.8 grams of iron two. Right? And then uh, there's actually going to be uh, one mole of um, H2O2 for every two moles of iron two that's oxidized, right? And uh, next, we're going to say, well, there's uh, 34 grams of H2O2 per mole, right? So now we're going to convert from uh, moles of, uh, from tabs, iron tabs, to grams of iron, from grams of iron to moles of iron, moles of iron to moles of peroxide, then from moles of peroxide to grams of peroxide, right? Then we're gonna say 100 grams of 3% for every three grams of H2O2, right? And then we're gonna say about, then there's about one milliliter, for one gram. And this comes out to be, 2.28 milliliters of 3% H2O2. Okay. So when you've uh, absorbed this and you've written this down, I have a question for you. When I did the calculus, and I got one point eight. Okay. Well, I also well, got one point eight. Well, the evidence is mounting then that I did it wrong. So let's let's just say it's one point eight. Um. Now, if it, if it takes one point eight mils, right? Um, to make a 25% excess. How are you going to measure this out? How, how are you going to measure this? Like how, how in the lab to measure 1.8 mL, right? Thinking, hmm, gosh, I don't really have any, I have a more pipette. I can go to 0 0.1 mils, I could do that, you know. And I actually have a 2.0 ml pipette, right? A two, I want 1.8, not 2, right? So let me ask you, let's say you took the more pipette 
and you pipetted it in and you got you made a mistake and you actually got 2.1 mls of h2o2 transferred right that's sort of, that's sort of like a mistake right so how um uh how can you correct for that mistake or, or like what's going on? How do you tell your instructor or like what, you know, how do you deal with this? I'm being a little bit vague here, but I want you to, to think about this for a moment, right? Could you add more iron? You could. You could throw in another tablet, right? What else could you do? I love that answer, by the way. That's the perfect answer that I was looking for, even though Sorry, I need to. So the answer here is you don't do anything because H2O2 is a limiting or an excess reagent. Excess? It's an excess reagent, right? Yeah. So if you got 25% excess at 1.8, maybe you'll have. 35% excess or 45% excess at 2.1. Will that make any difference at all in your results? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think you're good. I don't know if I missed this part, but how are we guaranteeing that 1.8 is 25% excess? Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, 25 is not, it actually 1.8 is not 25% excess. Ah. <laughs> okay. ah, so 1.8, uh, times 1.25 is equal to 2.28 mLs, right? Ah, there's the 2.28. 2.25. Okay, so that's how it is. 2.28. Sorry, <laughs> and then, and then and then if you measure three, is that a problem? And no, not a problem. <laughs> you know, whenever whenever I start getting like all preachy about stuff, I always screw up. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Anyway. So having, having an excess of excess reagent doesn't really change the result, right? You know, there's no, um, you know, this reaction goes to completion. You know, it just like, you know, there, there's always some sort of like tiny amount of equilibrium you can get at the end of like a billion decimal points, but, but H2O2 and iron, it goes to completion. There's no equilibrium arrows. So we can assume that Within all of the uh, digits of precision that we can generate, it is um, uh, not a problem. Okay. So um, now let us see here. Uh, let's move forward even. And let's say um, that uh, hold on. let me move back. That's basically what we did now. Oh yeah, okay. So now um here's how do we get the result, you know. Take the moles of iron oxide. You know, if you get 
or 0.277 grams of iron oxide, you know, and then divide the, by the molecular weight, you know, that's the number of moles, you know, you can say two moles per one, and turn that back into um, to grams of iron here, multiply by the formula weight of iron. 194 grams is over 12 tablets, right? Is 16.1 grams per tablet or 61 milligrams, you know? And uh, that, that's how you do that um, equation, you know? So um, let's just test ourselves here and say we've got um, the, ah, okay. Let's say we've got 0.3 grams of iron oxide from 12 tablets. Okay. Let's just go, yeah. So um, I'm gonna try and do this in real time just for fun here. So 0 0.300 grams of Fe2O3, you know, in 12 tablets. So we go 0 0.300 grams of Fe2O3 times one mole in 156.69 grams. And then we see there's two Fe for every one Fe2O3, right? It's just this stoichiometric quantity here coming up there, right? And then we're going to multiply by 55.8, 5 grams of Fe, for every mole of Fe, okay? And we're going to divide that by 12 tablets. And this comes out to, um, uh, oh, let's multiply by milligrams. And this comes out to 17. 17.5. 17.5? Yeah. How come I got 17.8? And then that one is not 156, the molar mass of, uh, you know, like ferric oxide. I mean, that Fe2O3 oh, is 159. 159. Uh, 159? Oh my God. You come from a different universe than me. 17 point something else. I don't know. 485. <laughs> two, two eight five? A four. Two eight. Four, eight, four eight five. Four. Okay. 17.4 milligrams per tablet. 169 or 159. Sorry about that. Um, you can always choose to believe me or Alvin. <laughs> uh, so be... does, that, does that make sense now? So that's how you would report that answer. You just get the numbers in here, right? The number comes out right. Excellent. So um, now let's go back to the, um, so that is the end, I think. Oh no, there's also, you know, stuff about limiting reagent, da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, Ah, uh, okay, okay. So let's do a limit. Let's do a limiting reagent, right? Let's do a limiting reagent. Um, so here's the oxidation of oxalic acid with permanganate in acid. You know, actually it takes more acidic protons than there are moles of oxalic acid here. So it's interesting. And that will make carbon dioxide, manganese two and um, eight waters, right? And then the manganese too actually um, precipitates a manganese hydroxide. And, you know, manganese oxide hydroxide. Crap. So um, that requires five moles of oxalic acid or two moles of manganese, right? So if we have 1.15 grams of oxalic acid, 0.6 grams of permanganate and excess acid, right? Which is limiting? Is it um, this guy here or is it this guy here, which is limiting here, right? 
So um, let's see how, how do we do that. Um, switching back Wait, and forth here. RTX yes. 70 is going to outperform a 2080 Ti at less than half the price. Zine? That's interesting, but it's sort of off topic. I love it. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. Um, so um, we've got five oxalates plus two permanganates, plus six protons makes MCO2 plus two Mn plus two, which precipitates out plus eight H2O. Okay. Now, um, uh, let's see here. Now, if we have start out with 1.15 grams of Na2, C2O4, which is 134 grams per mole, and 0 0.60 grams of KMnO4 at 158 grams per mole, then um, which of these is limiting? Okay, so, um, well, let's just compute the moles of, I don't know, uh, let's just compute the number of times we can carry out this reaction with 1.15 and 0.60, right? So 1.15 grams, A2C2O4, times one mole over 134 grams, times something that's going to tell us um, the number of times we can do this per mole of this, right? So if we do this once, if we do this reaction once, how many moles of this stuff have we used? If we go through this reaction once, we make those 10 CO2, how many moles of uh, oxalic acid have we used? Or call it Na2, whatever. Five. Five, exacto mundo. So we got one equivalent of the reaction, right? For every five moles of, call it C2O4 minus two, right? five moles of this. That's a five. This is an MOL. And let's see. So this goes to 0 0.001716 equivalents, right? Now if we go to 0 0.60 grams of K M N O four. Okay. Got to compute the number of moles there. One mole for every one fifty eight grams. Oops, one fifty eight grams times one equivalent for every ah one um one equivalent reaction for how many moles of permanganate? Two. Two exactly two moles of MnO4 minus, right? This goes to 0 0.001899 equivalents, right? So, which of these is limiting? Which of these is limiting in this case? Permanganate or oxalate? Oxalate. Oxalate is limiting. Bing, 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 bing. This, um, this guy is limiting because there's less 
moles of you know equivalence of the reaction, right? Good, good. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I I know that's not true, but that's fine. As long as it makes sense to some of you, then hopefully some of you can convince the rest of you. Okay. So then, if we put these together, uh, how many grams of CO2 will we make? Okay. Do we start with this value or this value? The limiting one, maybe? The limiting one, definitely. Definitely the limiting one, right? Because, so, like, because if we don't use limiting one, then only the remaining is going to react, but limiting reagent is not there, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I wouldn't exactly say it that way, but yeah. I would say um, you can't get this much product if you only have that much reactant, you know? This is the maximum react amount of product that you can make because um, you run out of this shit when you make that much, right? Yeah. So we can say um, 0 0.001716 equivalence of the reaction times 10 moles of CO2 equivalent times uh, 48 grams CO2 per mole, right? And that comes out to um, 0 0.82 grams. Does that make sense? Excellent. Okay. So we are done with chapter one here. We're done. Do the homework. Um, professor, the, yes. Sorry, I, I was wondering: Are the slides available anywhere on Canvas? Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're in files. Okay, at, you upload just the files, like not the video. The video is available too. Okay, separately. I only saw. I think I only found video, but I'll look again. Yeah, there's video, and you have to look in the files section. Because okay. I, yeah, it's it's a lot of maintenance. Yeah. Anyway, okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, no, it's all good. Okay, cool. All righty, guys. Are we good for today? Are we cooked? Stick a fork in us. Yep. Fork, fork time. All righty, guys. Sure. Oh, bye bye.